welcome back uh, to Recreation Station here at E.P. Tom Sawyer State Park. My name is Clinton Joplin. I'm Emma Faulkner. Today we're talking about Kentucky native trees. That's right. Right now we're standing here with Kentucky State Tree. If you know it, it's the tulip tree. Uh, it's been known that uh, Daniel Boone actually carved a uh, canoe from a tulip tree. Also, the tulip tree is known for being the tallest shade tree in North America. That's right. They go very tall and straight. Now, an interesting fact about the tulip tree, it's also called the tulip poplar or yellow poplar, is it's not a poplar. It's actually in the magnolia family. But it's called the tulip tree because of the tulip-like flowers. So we're going to take a closer look at one. This is the tulip tree flower. You could also call it sunshine in a cup because of the color there. You got the orange in the middle and then yellow on the outside. Now, a cool way to know for sure if you're looking at a tulip tree is to look at the shape of the leaf. It often looks like a cat face if you got the ears on top and the whiskers out to the side. If you can picture some eyes and a mouth in the middle, you got a cat face. All right, we're here at some pawpaws. Huh? No, no, we're talking about pawpaw trees. What'd you say? Oh, never mind. Oh, yes, yes, I'm fine. Oh, whatever. We're here at Kentucky's pawpaw tree, one of Kentucky's native fruit bearing trees. The fruit on it, if you've ever seen it, is kind of a mix between like a banana and a custard type. So here you can see on the tree we have a pawpaw flower and they're not like the typical flowers. They have a more pungent smell in order to attract flies to pollinate them. So then those will turn into our pawpaws in about late fall time. One thing we can tell this is a pawpaw is that shape of the leaf kind of distinct it's got wider at the end so it's a pretty cool tree to Kentucky here we're gonna see what other trees we can find too have a lot of different uses. You might be able to see here there's some sticky sap coming out of it. Now Native Americans would heat that up and use that as a glue. Now this pine tree, I can tell it's a white pine. You want to know how? I can tell this is a white pine tree because of the number of needles in a bundle. So if I find a bundle of needles here, I can see that there is five individual pine needles in a bundle. Now to remember that, you can spell out the word white, W-H-I-T-E. Got five letters and five needles, so I can tell this is a white pine. It's pretty neat. This tree was pointed out to us by a park volunteer, Sven. These are bald cypress trees. They're conifers that lose their needle-like leaves in the fall. It's probably where they get their name. Let's go check out some other stuff. We found ourselves a redbud tree. Now I can tell it's a redbud tree because of the shape of its leaves. Its leaf here is heart-shaped and hearts are red, so this is a redbud. Now this one's young, so it's pretty red color right now, but the leaves will turn green. Now the neat fact about the redbud tree is that the flowers that grow on it are edible. Not much nutrition value, but it'll make a pretty salad. They also have these legume seed pods. Kind of looks like green beans. They're also edible, but pretty skinny and tough. Now let's go see what Clinton found. Here's another common tree. This is a hackberry. You can tell it's a hackberry because the distinctive bark pattern it has here, the bark kind of protrudes from the, from the base here. So let's go see another tree. Now look what we found. We actually found a sweet gum tree. Now Native Americans used to pick the sap off this tree and chew it up. They could mix it with sweet stuff and make it like chewing gum. That's why they get the name sweet gum. It's also good for inflammation, so if you had a sore throat, you could chew on that. It would make it feel better. A good identifier about sweet gum is these little spiky balls that are all in the ground around it. It keeps their seeds inside, and when it drops, the seeds come out. And also another good indicator is the star-shaped leaf. Now let's go find Emma and see what kind of tree she found. Now we're under a buckeye tree. This is probably a yellow buckeye. I can tell because of the compound leaf here has five leaflets, kind of looks like a hand shape. 
for the Buckeye tree, you might have heard of the candy that looks like that, the peanut butter covered in chocolate. That's what the seeds here will look like. And people used to carry those around for good luck, but they're actually poisonous to humans. Well, we want to thank you all for watching today. Um, here's some different identification keys that we use today to identify different trees. That's right. You have different charts with just pictures and descriptions, or there's a lot of different dichotomous keys you can use that are kind of like charts that you follow to identify the different types of plants and trees. There are also some uh, really neat apps out there for your phone that you can actually take pictures of the leaves or the bark and it can tell you what, what tree it is. That's right. So I hope you guys had fun. I hope you all go out and try to find some other native or invasive trees that you might find around the area. Uh, thanks again. This is Kentucky State Parks Recreation Station, EP Tom Sawyer. And I'm Clinton. And I'm Emma. See y'all later.